Hey everybody, I'm Steve and I'm joined by Patrick Stone at GamersNexus.net. We're here at PAX East 2016 closing out the show, but we wanted to talk about whether or not you should wait for Broadwell E, so that's the main question. Thinking about building a computer, you're looking at maybe Haswell E, but hey, Broadwell E is probably around the corner. Should I wait for it? That's what we're answering today. Before getting to that, all this coverage from PAX East 2016 is brought to you by CyberPower, who make the fan book that we recently overclocked past four gigahertz with their CPU in there. That was an unlocked CPU. So Patrick, uh, what's the main thing to look at here immediately with the waiting for Broadwell? Well, so uh, I think users need to think about what, what to expect, and you're looking at uh, the Haswell in the past was uh, about 5% slower in terms of instructions per cycle than Broadwell. IPC, if yeah. you've seen those letters, that's what that is. And if you look at that, you're thinking, all right, Broadwell wins. Well, that's not necessarily true because then if you look at the clock speeds, the base frequencies, the Broadwell CPU is actually about 200 megahertz slower than, say, like the... And when we're talking Broadwell, we're talking about the 5775C. Mm -hmm. And if you compare that to the 4770K, then you're looking at like a 200 megahertz loss there. Right. If you compare it to the Devil's Canyon release, the 4790K, it's, you're looking at like a 700 megahertz loss there. So you look at the, the base frequency loss, combine that with the instructions per cycle increase, and at best you're going to get a wash, right. maybe even a loss for the Broadwell CPU. Um, but then you can also think about some other things too. For instance, uh, Chorus. yeah, right, uh, or even even the cache, right? Right, cache is good. Right. So Broadwell had this nice thing called Crystalwell, where it gave it 128 megabytes more of embedded DRAM, mm -hmm. and that embedded DRAM could be used as L4 cache. And so in some multi-threaded or you know, multi-core uh, applications, the Broadwell could actually win, right. and it was because of that L4 cache. Well, that's not really going to be there when you look at the Extreme Edition. Right, because right. they're not having the There's no IGP. IGP. Yes, So exactly. you lose that immediately. Uh, first, should also point out the sort of release timeline. We've heard here at the show the rumor is probably within the next month-ish. Some people have told us. We've also heard the next few months. Either way, Broadwell E will probably be in the summer. Yeah, right around the corner. That is normally when Intel does their E-series CPUs anyway. So uh, if you are looking at building a machine, the timeline is basically are you building it in the next few months and how immediately do you need it? Is it for production? Is it for gaming? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, that stated, so on the gaming side, we've we talked about the five percent difference between Haswell and Broadwell for IPC. The core difference is going to be a it's a four eight ten I think or six eight ten. Yeah. So on the Haswell, uh, the Haswell E, it, you've got a six core and an eight core, uh, and it, technically it's a two six cores and one eight right. core. And on the Broadwell E, the leaked information shows us that there's going to be six core, eight core, and ten core. Right. So the only place that Broadwell is going to win in that area, this is Broadwell E we're talking about, is going to be the ten core. And with 20 threads. Yeah. So the question then is, do you have anything that's going to use 10 cores and 20 threads? Maybe maybe rendering. Yeah, maybe. maybe. So potentially production work. Uh, in theory, something like Adobe Premiere should use every thread that you have available. I have not tested this. We use Premiere, but I haven't tested it. And in theory, that's the case, and you would actually see some kind of gain. I don't know for you how much that would be, but if you're in production, then you, sh you should be researching that, basically. Right, but even there, you've got a question, because uh, if you look at the Haswell E, well, excuse me, if you look at the Haswell versus the Broadwell, mm -hmm. if you look at the core cache, or you could say cache per core, uh, the Haswell CPUs had two megabytes of this L3 one, cache. 1.5 on Broadwell. You got it, exactly. And so if, you're, if you extrapolate that and say, let's look at Haswell E, Broadwell E, then it's possible that the 10 core Broadwell E may have less L3 cache than the eight core right. as well. So it'd be like 15 megabytes versus 16 Broadwell E versus, and so that's speculation, but it's- <laughs> Very much so. It's reasonable speculation because we have the data from the previous, mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same architecture. It's just updated for, uh, for more cores basically and no IGP. Uh, what else do we need to look at here? So we've got IPC overclocking. So uh, overclocking on Haswell and Ignoring Devil's Canyon, I suppose, for a moment. Overclocking on Haswell, you could average about 25%. Yep, that's about I believe, right. I believe overclock, and then Broadwell also about. S yeah, slightly higher, but but like 26, right. say. And then uh, Haswell E was, was in the 43 to 67%. Depending on whether it's conservative or aggressive, yeah. Or you're going to melt your CPU if you don't care. <laughs> uh, so those are the overclock values. The, the point of bringing up Haswell versus Broadwell non-E is that they were effectively identical in their overclocking potential, sans a couple percent one way or the other. And uh, assuming that remains the, the case here, which it probably should, because uh, it's the same architecture. Reasonable. Yeah, so the reasonable assumption would be that you could probably see the same 43 to 67%, uh, you know, 
conservative versus aggressive overclock potential as you saw in Haswell E. So that's uh, nothing's really immediately to look forward to that would make me go buy this thing if you're an extreme overclocker. Uh, nothing that says buy this thing if you're a gamer. No. Because games don't really care about 20 threads. <laughs> and uh, that's not to say that it's, it's bad to have 20 threads, but you're really only going to be using them in something like production. And even then, there's a cache question, and we'll have to test that at the site to figure out what that means. Yeah, and the only other thing I could think of that, that might convince me to buy a Bravo E would be, hey, maybe it's got more PCI Express lanes that are version 3.0. Right. And we don't know what's going to happen with that, but it's likely that it's going to be the same setup where your lower-end Bravo E's have 28. 28 lanes and your higher-ends have 40 lanes. Yeah. I don't really see that changing at all either. I don't think so. And so in the end, what do you got, Steve? Uh, I w if I were building a machine soon-ish, I would just build it now yep. <laughs> and, and not wait. That's that's kind of how I do things. I even if you want to stay on the bleeding edge, I mean it's it's the difference between like being the fresh blood on the edge and being the slightly dried five minute old blood on the edge. There's really no major gain uh, from waiting, and it's not major for overclocking. It's not major on the core thread side for anyone reasonable except maybe production. We'll have to test that. That's the one question I'll put aside because I don't know what kind of gain you'll see there, but it, yeah. it should not be that much. It's still single digit percentages, I think. Yeah, the only thing you can think of to look out for in the future is that the integrated voltage regulator, which is in both Hasbro right. and Broadwell, might go away in the Skylake yeah. if, if, it looks, if Skylake E looks like Skylake. Right. And if that happens, then Skylake's going to probably have better overclocking potential. Yeah, Skylake E, but then you're waiting like one plus years. And don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Because <laughs> then you're going to wait forever. You can always wait for new hardware. Uh, so my answer normally to these questions is don't wait unless I know something's immediately around the corner yep. and it will give you a major benefit. This one is kind of around the corner immediately, but the benefit is questionable if at all existent and especially for gamers, especially for overclockers from our current information. This is all uh, informed speculation, so grain of salt and all of that, but uh, I, I would not wait. There it is. So that's all for this video. Check the Patreon link to post all video for more information to help us out directly, and then links in the description below for our previous coverage or hit the channel for PAX coverage. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.